Bill Cosby soared to fame with his unique brand of humor and charismatic personality, becoming a prominent figure in American television comedy in the late 20th century. Best known for his groundbreaking sitcom, The Cosby Show, which redefined African-American representation on television. So it's work. <laughs> no. 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 Cosby also had a prolific career as a stand-up comedian, author, and actor. However, his life took a dramatic turn with numerous legal challenges and controversies, overshadowing his professional achievements. Join us as we explore the complex and compelling story of Bill Cosby. Bill Cosby, a household name, found his partner for life in Camille Olivia Cosby, an American television producer and philanthropist. Their first encounter was as charming as any love story could be, meeting on a blind date at a bowling alley in 1963. Bill, performing at a club in Georgetown, and Camille, a University of Maryland student, hit it off immediately and thus began a courtship that would last 58 years and counting. They married in a large multi-purpose hall at a Catholic church in Olney, Maryland in January 1964. Together, Bill and Camille built a life and a family. They welcomed five children, Erica, Erin, Ennis, Ensa, and Evan, each carrying the Cosby name. Their only son, Ennis William Cosby, born in the spring of 1969, grew up to be an inspiration for the character of Theo Huxtable on the iconic sitcom, The Cosby Show. Despite the immense success, the Cosby family also faced unfathomable grief with the loss of two of their children. These events brought home the reminder that irrespective of fame and fortune, they too were not immune to life's most painful trials. Ennis's story was cut tragically short when, in 1997, he was murdered while changing a flat tire. Ensa Cosby McLean, the third of the Cosby children, shared her father's passion for the performing arts appearing on The Cosby Show, and later becoming a yoga instructor. Her life, however, also ended too soon when she succumbed to renal disease in 2018. Ensa had been an outspoken supporter of her father during his tumultuous sexual assault trial in 2017, standing by him in his darkest times. Bill and Camille's marriage, spanning over five decades, is one of the longest in the entertainment industry. They've lived through the highest peaks of success and the lowest valleys of personal tragedy together. Even amidst rumors of divorce, which surfaced when Camille was seen without her wedding ring, Cosby's representative assured the public that the bond was as strong as ever. As Bill Cosby put it, the lack of rings was a non-issue since they've been happily married for so many years and counting. The Cosby household, rooted in the Protestant faith, has been established in homes in Shelburne, Massachusetts and Cheltenham, Pennsylvania. These homes became the setting for family gatherings, holiday celebrations, and most importantly, a place for the family to rally together during times of both celebration and sorrow. Life for the Cosbys has not been without its public scrutiny, with Bill's professional life being overshadowed in recent years by allegations and legal battles. Back in December 1965, the first murmur emerged when Christina Reilly accused Cosby of an indecent act. It remained largely unheard until 2005 when she added her voice to Andrea Constant's case as Jane Doe, Naran 12. Reilly's story told to a few close to her over the years was a forewarning of the flood that was to come. As the 1980s rolled in, more stories surfaced. Joan Tarshish confided in a reporter about an alleged assault. And Playboy playmate Victoria Valentino also made accusations during an interview that, for reasons unknown, never saw the light of day. Then, in 1990, Wendy Williams discussed the accusations on her radio show, a move that saw Cosby himself push back immediately. The turn of the millennium brought more accusations. LaShelley Covington, at just 20 years old, reported an incident involving Cosby in his Manhattan townhouse. Despite her detailed account, the case didn't go forward due to decisions made by the district attorney's office. In 2004, Andrea Constan's allegations 
became a cornerstone of the legal challenges Cosby would face. In a 2005 civil case deposition, Bill Cosby detailed his numerous extramarital affairs, discussing his encounters with several women, including Andrea Constant, Beth Ferrier, and Teresa Serignese. Cosby described these relationships as a blend of mentorship and intimacy, often providing financial support to the women involved. Andrea Constant, recount of the night was different from what Cosby claimed. The experience that night would drastically change her life. She woke up confused and disoriented in Bill Cosby's house. With her clothes disheveled, realizing something was terribly wrong, Cosby, then a beloved figure known as America's Dad, offered her breakfast, but she left in tears, grappling with the events of that night. The night she visited Cosby's house for career advice, she never imagined the turn of events. Cosby offered her pills to take the edge off, which she assumed were harmless. However, they left her incapacitated, and she remembers waking up to Cosby assaulting her. Constan's decision not to report the incident immediately was influenced by several factors. The shock and shame, coupled with the effects of the pills, left her with an unclear memory of the event. Additionally, confronting a man as influential as Cosby seemed an impossible challenge at the time. However, Constan couldn't let go of what happened. She left her job at Temple University and moved back to Toronto. Struggling with the aftermath of the assault, she turned inward with her emotional turmoil manifesting in physical symptoms. It took her a year to come to terms with the incident. Cosby's relationships extended to other women, including Sean Thompson and Paige Young, often involving financial assistance. Although criminal charges weren't filed at the time due to insufficient evidence, Constan's civil claim saw 13 women ready to support her story. Cosby admitted to giving Constan Benadryl, claiming their encounter was consensual and describing it as somewhere between permission and rejection. He also acknowledged giving Serignesi quaaludes before their sexual encounters, which she allegedly took knowingly. However, Cosby denied any non-consensual acts or drugging without consent. Cosby also revealed shocking admissions. He acknowledged giving quaaludes to women before engaging in sexual activities with them. Andrea Constand, one of the women involved, received over $3 million in a settlement. She saw this as a victory of sorts, a form of justice saying, it was a win for us. I'd done the right thing and it was everything I could possibly do. He settled out of court with Constant to avoid public embarrassment, according to a source close to him. His lawyer, Patrick O'Connor, raised concerns about the one-sided nature of the deposition's release, emphasizing the need for confidentiality in legal proceedings. The public reaction to the settlement was mixed. Many media outlets depicted the case as a mere money grab, a classic shakedown. Cosby himself appeared to echo this sentiment. He told the National Enquirer, sometimes you try to help people and it backfires on you, and then they try to take advantage. This statement came even as he continued to be honored and awarded, despite the grave nature of his admissions. The settlement, however, didn't silence the storm. Tamara Green, having previously been Jane Doe number 10 in Constance's lawsuit, went public with her story alleging Cosby drugged and assaulted her in the 1970s. Stories continued to unfold in the press. Beth Ferrier, another Jane Doe, and Sean Upshaw Brown, a past acquaintance of Cosby's, recounted their own troubling experiences, drawing a damning image of a man far removed from his public persona. The publication of these stories in Philadelphia Magazine in 2006 brought everything into the spotlight. Robert Huber's article, paired with the harrowing narratives of Barbara Bowman and others, painted a picture of a man leading a double life. Bowman's account was particularly unsettling. She detailed not one, but two incidents of drugging and assault at the hands of Cosby, who had been her mentor. After escaping, she claimed her attempts to build a career were thwarted by Cosby's influence. What began as quiet murmurs in the 60s and 70s snowballed into a full-blown scandal by the 2000s, stripping away the veneer of America's favorite TV dad. 
In 2017, over 60 women came forward with claims against him, ranging from assault to misconduct, all of which he denied. These accusations spanned back to the 1960s, but flew under the radar until comedian Hannibal Buress brought them to the limelight during a comedy show in 2014. This sparked a media frenzy, and soon Cosby's reputation began to crumble. Barbara Bowman, another of Cosby's accusers, couldn't keep silent any longer after reading about Constan's story. She shared her own frightening experiences with Cosby from when she was just 18, aspiring to make a name for herself in acting and modeling. She claimed Cosby had been a mentor to her before he assaulted her. In the midst of it all, Janice Dickinson, a well-known face, brought forward her own troubling experience with Cosby. Her story, she said, was one of being drugged and assaulted. Cosby's lawyer had a quick response saying, Cosby wouldn't even comment on such claims. They called the allegations unsubstantiated and talked about media vilification, as if to say the stories were just made to bring Cosby down. As 2015 rolled around, Sindra Ladd added her voice to the mix, saying Cosby had drugged and assaulted her way back in 1969. Then Lily Bernard stepped forward with a claim that Cosby assaulted her in the early 1990s. She had talked to the police in Atlantic City, and since New Jersey doesn't let the clock run out on pressing charges for rape, there was talk about whether she could take Cosby to court. But it was all a bit hazy. It wasn't clear if what happened to her took place in New Jersey. That summer, New York Magazine made a bold move. Their cover showed 35 women seated in chairs, with one chair left empty. It was as if they were saying there could be more stories out there, more women who hadn't stepped into the public eye. Inside, the women shared their experiences, speaking about a culture that didn't seem ready to listen. Then came a documentary called Cosby, The Women Speak, where 13 alleged victims talked about what they claimed happened to them. As the days passed, people started using harsh words to describe him, words like sociopath and serial rapist. Jewel Allison, one of the women who accused Cosby, called him a sociopath. She said, looking back, that Cosby might be America's greatest serial rapist that ever got away with this for the longest amount of time. She thought he got away because he was hiding behind the likable image of Cliff Huxtable. Lisa Bonet, known to many as the free-spirited Denise Huxtable from The Cosby Show, has long been silent about the man who played her on-screen father. However, in a candid interview with Netta Porter's Porter magazine, Bonet shared her thoughts on Bill Cosby amidst the whirlwind of allegations against him. She revealed that while she did not directly witness any misconduct, the news of Cosby's alleged behavior didn't come as a shock. Bonet sensed an energy around Cosby that was unsettling, something she described as sinister and shadowy. It's a type of vibe, she suggests, that you can't hide forever. As Cosby faced a retrail, accused of drugging and molesting Andrea Constant, among others, Bonet's reflections gained more weight. The trial wasn't just about one person's testimony, but involved the collective voices of 19 women whose experiences with Cosby spanned decades, all sharing disturbingly similar stories. Bonet's relationship with Cosby had its tensions, notably after her appearance in the movie Angel Heart, where she engaged in a racy scene that ruffled feathers back on the set of their family-oriented sitcom. This rift marked a significant departure from her Cosby show character. Throughout all the allegations against him, Cosby has stood firm in his denials, maintaining his innocence even as the number of women accusing him of misconduct grew. Cosby's response to the whirlwind of claims has been minimal and measured. In 2014, when asked directly about the allegations, his answer was simple. I don't talk about it. It was a stance that he has consistently held. In past conversations that later became public, he avoided the topic. His few words on the matter have been careful, once suggesting to a reporter that responding to such was unnecessary and beneath him. 
As Bill Cosby faced numerous accusations, the world reacted by pulling back the accolades it once gave him. He saw his awards taken away, one by one. The Kennedy Center Honor and the Mark Twain Prize for American Humor, which he received with much fanfare in 1998 and 2009, respectively, were both taken back in 2018. His groundbreaking shows were also removed from TV, leaving a silence where there once was the familiar sound of laughter that had been part of American homes for decades. The Academy of Motion Picture Arts and Sciences, which celebrates cinematic achievements, decided Cosby no longer represented the high standards they uphold. On May 3, 2018, they removed him from their membership alongside other figures who had fallen from grace. Educational institutions too took a stand. Over 25 colleges and universities that had once bestowed honorary degrees upon Cosby withdrew them, signaling a clear rebuke. Cosby's career, which spanned over five decades, saw an unexpected downturn. Joan Tarshish, one of the women who accused Cosby, brought a hard truth to light. She suggested that just as O.J. Simpson's name had become overshadowed by his legal troubles, rather than his athletic achievements, Cosby's name might similarly evoke thoughts of his allegations before his work. Rolling Stone, while recognizing Cosby's past contributions to comedy, pointed out the discomfort now associated with his work. They acknowledged his talent, but admitted the challenge of separating the art from the artist, especially when the artist stands accused of such serious misconduct. Even outside the comedy world, Cosby's case has had ripple effects. The classic Christmas song, Baby It's Cold Outside, felt these waves when radio stations pulled it amid criticisms that its lyrics resonated uncomfortably in the wake of the Cosby scandal. Susan Loser, daughter of the song's composer, lamented how the allegations against Cosby had reframed conversations around the song, urging people to consider the historical context in which it was written. The depth of Cosby's impact was further explored in 2022 with the release of W. Kamau Bell's Showtime documentary, We Need to Talk About Cosby. The film delved into the tangled web of Cosby's professional achievements and his personal life, including detailed accounts from many of his alleged victims. In 2016, a piece of personal news about Bill Cosby came to light that added another layer to his already complicated narrative. His lawyers let the world know that Cosby could no longer see. He was legally blind. By 2017, as Cosby navigated his loss of vision, he sought to tell his side of the story. He chose to speak with the National Newspaper Publishers Association feeling they would focus on the hard facts rather than leaning into the sensationalist stories that had been circulating. In this rare interview, Cosby, along with a former publicist, confirmed that his eyesight had faded away in 2015. Throughout Cosby's legal troubles, his wife Camille has stood firmly by his side. She has been a constant, unwavering presence, asserting his innocence despite the allegations and conviction that would shake their world. Camille has chosen to see her husband not as the man accused by many, but as the person she has loved and known for over half a century. Camille's choice to avoid visiting Bill in prison was a powerful statement in itself. She declared that she did not wish to see her husband in such a place, and so for over two years, she waited holding on to the hope of his return home. This dedication speaks volumes of her commitment to him and their life together. When the court called upon her to testify, Camille exercised her rights as a spouse, declining to answer questions. Her silence was not a sign of indifference, but a strategy to protect the life and reputation they had built together. She knew the man she married. It was this image she fought to preserve against all the accusations. In a heartfelt statement in 2014, Camille painted a picture of the Bill Cosby she knows. This differs from the one portrayed in the media. The man I met and fell in love with and whom I continue to love is the man you all knew through his work, she wrote. Camille's words have been clear and direct, 
criticizing what she saw as an unjust trial and slanted news coverage. Bill Cosby was called guilty because the news and the people accusing him said so. That's it, she stated. As the legal proceedings unfolded, Cosby's testimony revealed admissions of providing prescription drugs during encounters with women, which he stated were consensual. The court, however, found him guilty of indecent assault. And in 2018, he was sentenced to prison alongside a hefty fine. Yet this chapter of Cosby's life took another turn when, after serving three years, he was released from prison. The Philadelphia Supreme Court overturned his conviction, citing reasons that brought the legal process under scrutiny. A new chapter unfolded for Bill Cosby as he stepped out of state bounds to reunite with his wife, Camille, after a whirlwind turn of events. Andrea Constant, the central figure in the case against Cosby, reflected on this outcome saying, I was believed in court and that was the most important thing. She noted that Cosby served only a minimal amount of time, implying that factors like fame and wealth can impact legal outcomes. The Cosby case has had far-reaching implications. It has contributed to changes in the statute of limitation laws in various U.S. states, allowing more victims to pursue justice. As a result, Cosby now faces multiple civil suits. Constance's words, you might be able to escape jail, but you can't escape your past, resonate in this context. Andrew Wyatt, Cosby's publicist, shared that the details were being ironed out for Cosby to meet his wife, who was reportedly out of state. Cosby left home before the afternoon, dressed simply in a black t-shirt and sweatpants, giving a victory sign as he stepped into the car. An onlooker, caught up in the moment, called out to the comedian, cheering him on to go see his queen. The next day, Cosby spent the morning pondering whether it was all just a dream, his publicist recounted. After his release from prison in 2021, the buzz around Bill Cosby didn't quiet down. In fact, it took on a new life as reports surfaced that Cosby wasn't just going to step back into the shadows of his home. He was plotting a return to the spotlight. Cosby's team began reaching out, crafting plans for a comedy tour that would stretch from the United States, across the border to Canada, and even over the ocean to London. Despite his legal team's advice to remain silent, Cosby was brimming with things to say, with plans to potentially channel his thoughts into a documentary or even a tour. He wants to get back to work. He wants to get back on the stage. He's got a story to tell. Wyatt stated. But Cosby's plans weren't limited to live performances. He was also working on a five-part deep dive into his life, legacy, and what he went through while behind bars. Alongside this, a book was in the works, presumably to offer even more insight into his experiences and thoughts. However, just as these comeback plans began to take shape, they were put on hold. That September, it was announced that Cosby had decided to cancel the proposed tour and projects. The reasons weren't made clear, leaving many to wonder about the future for the 80-year-old entertainer, exploring the spiritual and religious beliefs of Bill Cosby. His religious background is rooted in both Methodist and Baptist traditions, reflecting the dual religion household he grew up in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Despite this religious upbringing, Cosby himself has expressed a somewhat casual approach to his faith, identifying with both denominations, but not always actively participating in organized religious practices. He describes his engagement with his faith as intermittent, with moments of conscious regard, interspersed with periods of moving without it. Cosby doesn't shy away from using biblical characters in his work but he also critiques and supports modern Christians. He believes black churches could do more in their communities, particularly in fighting drugs and crime. He appreciates football player Tim Tebow's open expression of his Christianity, seeing no issue with Tebow speaking about his faith publicly. However, Cosby has little patience for aggressive evangelism. He recalls an encounter in Syracuse, NY, where a man offered him a Bible and questioned his knowledge of Christ's love. Cosby's response was thoughtful, 
urging the man to consider Jesus' way of life as a model of behavior, rather than focusing on converting others. Despite declining the man's Bible, Cosby humorously notes that he already has eight. His response captures his belief that faith is more about how one lives and behaves than about overt expressions or attempts to convert others. This religious foundation laid the groundwork for the values he would later express in his professional work, most notably through his most famous creation, The Cosby Show. The Huxtable family, while not overtly religious on screen, exuded a sense of moral clarity and righteousness that resonated with Cosby's own beliefs. Cosby has often been quoted talking about the importance of faith. You can't be spiritually mature without being morally mature, he once said, highlighting the connection he sees between one's spiritual journey and their actions. Despite his Christian background, Cosby's take on spirituality has been inclusive. He's recognized the universal aspects of spirituality that cross religious boundaries. The essence of all religions is one. Only their approaches are different, he reflected. In his speeches and interviews, Cosby frequently referred back to his upbringing and the spiritual lessons he learned as a child. He's spoken about the role of churches in the community, emphasizing their importance not just as places of worship, but as pillars of support and education. When you carry the Bible, the Quran, the Torah, all those things bring the truth, he emphasized. He has noted the constructive role that religious institutions like the church, can play within society, praising the discipline and structure they can provide, as evident in the Muslim community with their abstention from drugs and alcohol. However, he's also been critical of evangelism that focuses on converting others rather than embodying the teachings of Christ through personal behavior. In his work, Cosby has never shied away from incorporating religious themes or characters often using them in his comedic material. His book, I Didn't Ask to Be Born, But I'm Glad I Was, includes humorous takes on biblical stories like Adam and Eve and Noah. However, Cosby's personal life and the allegations against him have, for many, cast a shadow over his public declarations of faith. In the wake of his legal troubles, some have looked back on his comments about spirituality with skepticism. Now let's explore Cosby's acting career. The 1960s marked the rise of Bill Cosby, a young comedian with a gift for storytelling that captured the hearts and laughs of America. His journey began in the city of San Francisco at the Hungry Eye Nightclub, where his stand-up routines resonated with audiences, leading to a series of comedy albums that won at the Grammys year after year. Cosby also ventured into television landing a role in I Spy, opposite Robert Culp. He was the first African-American to win an Emmy Award for his acting, etching his name into the depths of television history. As the 60s rolled on, Cosby starred in The Bill Cosby Show, where he played a physical education teacher, navigating the comedic trials of work and life. Through the laughter, Cosby was serious about education too, he returned to school pursuing higher education that would inform his later work. But even as he hit the books, he never left the screen, guest hosting The Tonight Show and starring in specials that brought his humor into living rooms across the country. His characters were real. They talked like us, they joked like us, and they made us see the humor in our own lives. Cosby had a knack for showing us that the everyday could be extraordinary and that comedy could be found in the most mundane of places. In the 1970s, Bill Cosby had already established himself as a groundbreaking comedian and actor in the 60s, and this decade saw him expanding his creative endeavors even further. Cosby brought to life Fat Albert and the Cosby Kids, a show that was not only entertaining but educational, using characters based on his own childhood. The show became a Saturday morning staple. Together with Sidney Poitier, Cosby worked on films like Uptown Saturday Night and Let's Do It Again, which were part of a movement to offer a comedic, positive portrayal of widespread, action-packed African-American films of the era. Additionally, 
Cosby continued to make his mark on television. He recorded segments for The Electric Company, which were aimed at teaching children to read. Cosby's commitment to education was evident not just in his entertainment projects, but also in his personal life as he resumed his own formal education, eventually earning a doctorate in education. The 1980s marked the zenith of Bill Cosby's career, a period where his star shone brightest. In September 1984, The Cosby Show debuted to widespread acclaim. As both a co-producer and the lead actor, Cosby infused the show with his brand of family-oriented humor. The sitcom mirrored Cosby's actual life to some extent. He and his wife Camille, like their on-screen counterparts, the Huxtables, were well-educated and successful with a large, loving family. The Cosby Show was more than entertainment. It was a cultural phenomenon. It reshaped the portrayal of African-American families on television, presenting them in a positive, affluent light that broke away from the stereotypes often seen in media. Cosby was deeply involved in the show's production, often basing plots on his ideas and ensuring it reflected his vision of family life. Despite the sitcom's warm and humorous portrayal of family, Cosby's attempt to branch out into the film industry with Leonard Part VI was less successful. He publicly criticized the film, advising audiences to avoid it, even though he had been a driving force behind its creation. In addition to his work on The Cosby Show, Cosby was also an advisor to the Los Angeles Student Film Institute, nurturing the next generation of filmmakers. In the 1990s, after the curtain fell on The Cosby Show in 1992, Cosby didn't step back. Instead, he launched into new ventures, one of which was a revival of the classic Groucho Marx game show, You Bet Your Life. His charisma and humor made the show a delightful watch, though it lasted just a year from 1992 to 1993. In 1994, Cosby returned to his roots in espionage, but with a feeling of looking back on good old times in the TV movie, I Spy Returns a nod to the show that had significantly marked his early acting career. That same year, he embarked on a new path with The Cosby Mysteries, a series that featured him as a detective, blending his comedic genius with a dash of mystery and intrigue. This period also saw Cosby in black-and-white film noir-themed commercials for Turner classic movies. Cosby's affinity for the big screen saw him reunite with Sidney Poitier in the 1990 film Ghost Dad. He also made appearances in The Meteor Man in 1993 and Jack in 1996, directed by Francis Ford Coppola, offering glimpses into different genres and styles. The late 1990s brought Cosby back to television with a new sitcom simply titled Cosby, where he reunited with his on-screen wife from The Cosby Show, Felicia Rashad. The show, which aired from 1996 to 2000, portrayed Cosby as Hilton Lucas, a down-to-earth, recently downsized senior citizen navigating the challenges of unemployment while trying not to step on his wife's toes. The show was beloved for its honest humor and the chemistry between Cosby and Rashad. During this time, Cosby also became the host of Kids Say the Darndest Things, a show that became a treasure trove of innocent humor and unexpected wisdom from children. His warm interaction with the young participants won hearts across America from 1998 to 2000. Cosby's influence wasn't limited to the screen. He continued to make a difference behind the scenes. He created Little Bill, an animated series based on his childhood experiences which debuted in 1999 and continued into the early 2000s. It was a show that resonated with preschoolers and their parents for its educational value and engaging storytelling. After the peak of his career in the late 20th century, Bill Cosby's activities in the 2000s began to shift focus. While his presence on television became less dominant, he continued to engage in educational and creative endeavors. Throughout the early 2000s, Cosby was not just content with impacting the world of television and education, he also continued to write books. In his literary works, he explored various themes, often focusing on humor and life lessons. 
remaining consistent with his public persona as a source of wisdom and family-oriented entertainment. In 2004, Cosby's attachment to the Fat Albert franchise materialized into a live-action film, which he co-wrote and executive produced. He even made an appearance in the movie, bridging the gap between his animated creation and the live-action adaptation. While the latter part of Cosby's career has been marred by legal issues and public scandal, it is impossible to overlook the impact he had on children's television and education. Despite the growing controversy, Cosby did not withdraw completely from the public eye. Bill Cosby's legacy extends far beyond his numerous awards and professional achievements. His life story, marked by both remarkable success and significant controversy, has left a complex impact on audiences around the world. Cosby's journey offers a clear perspective on both the power of celebrity and the consequences of personal actions. Share your thoughts on his life and career in the comments section below.